Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to start introducing looping. A lot of times when we're working with ActionScript, we want to do the same actions over and over again a certain number of times. Now, while we could actually put in our ActionScript the same line of code multiple times, eventually that's going to become too difficult to maintain. In addition, we might actually want things to execute a certain number of times based on different elements. So sometimes we might want something to run five times, sometimes tens, or sometimes we don't even know. So loops are a way that we can actually programmatically have actions run over and over again. And we can have a lot of control over how we actually can, uh, can loop that. The most basic loop is the for loop. And I'm going to introduce that, uh, in, introduce that right now. So I'm actually going to take you into an example for loop, and we'll start deconstructing it and show you, and I'll show you actually what all the parts mean. So in this case, let's just look at what we have up here at the top, lines uh, three, four, three, four, and five. So this is a typical for loop, um, and if I run this, you'll see that I have on the output panel, it actually outputs the numbers zero through nine. So let's actually take a look at all the different parts here and explain how we actually got that result in the output panel. All for loops start with the for statement. The for statement tells ActionScript that I'm going to actually start defining a repeatable section of, uh, of ActionScript that have a certain rules linked to how many times I can repeat this code. The for statement has three different pieces to it. The first one is where I actually initialize what's known as an iterator. An iterator is a special variable that's used inside of a for loop that keeps track of how many times I've actually executed the loop. Traditionally, the iterator is always referred to as i. In this case, I've created a new variable called i. I've made it a number, and I've given it an initial value of 0. You always need to give your iterator an initial value. You can't just leave it just be some arbitrary number initially. Um, the next thing is, after a semicolon, I have a equality statement here, where I actually am testing to see whether or not the iterator value, i, is less than 10. If i is less than 10, that means that the loop will actually execute. Whenever i is not less than 10, or it actually is equal to 10, it will then stop the loop entirely and then continue the execution of the code outside of the loop. The next and the last part of the for statement is the increment. This is actually how I'm going to modify the iterator value every single time I've finished, a, uh, finished an iteration of the loop. In this case, I'm using the increment operator, or plus plus, on i so that every time I execute the loop, I will increase by 1. So if you remember all those action script math functions that we covered before, this is where they all start really becoming more valuable. So when I actually execute this every single time, the i value, or the iterator, I'm actually outputting to the trace panel. So I run this the first time, i is going to be equal to 0, because that's what I initialized i to be in the for statement. So I get 0 on the output panel. Once it traces that, you'll notice that all the, 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 code, the trace statement is actually within a set of curly braces. These curly braces denote what the code block, or what, where I actually am defining what lines I want to repeat for each instance of the for loop. Since there's only one line here, it's going to just repeat that one uh, 10 times. But I could put as many lines of code inside of these curly braces as I want, and the, they will each be executed every time that the loop, ex, uh, loop takes place. All right, so I've outputted 0 to the, to the output panel. So now I want to modify 0, or i, by incrementing it by 1. So then it goes back to the top of the function and asks, is i, which is now equal to 1, less than 10? Yes, it is less than 10, so that's true. So then it's going to continue executing the loop. It becomes 2, it becomes 3, it becomes 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It outputs 9 to the, to the output panel, and then it increments it again to 10. Now the condition at the top, is i, or 10, less than 10? No, it is not. Since that is now false, it's going to exit out of the loop. So that's why I don't see 10 when I actually output that, to, uh, output that to the panel. So again, there are three major, uh, three major parts to the, to the for statement. The first is actually defining the iterator value. The second is actually defining what the condition is for the loop to execute each time. 
And then the third is to actually define how much that increment value is going to change for each loop, each loop of the, uh, each instance of the loop. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can combine this with some random elements to actually start creating the basics of, of a simple dice game. And we'll do that in the next video.